<laughs> yes. Greetings, greetings, and welcome to a quick vlog about Hurricane RV. Um, just wanted to do a praise everybody about what's going on here in the Houston area and let you know. Um, pressure is rising for Hurricane Harvey. I've been watching all the different websites, and I've got these different pages up right now. I'm trying to get them to capture, but a lot of these old weather websites actually use Flash still. And OBS Studio doesn't want to capture a Flash web page. So um, uh, anyway, yeah, it's getting kind of strange here. Um, no evacuation orders have been given. Things are not in an apocalyptic state. The world is not going to end. We'll be fine. Um, look at a lot of the actual maps. I can bring one up on screen right now and show you uh, basically where Hurricane Harvey is and what's going on with it presently. Right now it is closing in on a small stretch of town, a small stretch of the coast of uh, Texas, South Texas, that uh, uh, right on the Gulf Coast that includes a town called Corpus Christi, among other places. And I, I've had family that go there. I don't know anybody that lives there. I don't have family there. Uh, but I, I have known people that have lived there in the past, that live here now, or um, my family has gone to visit there on vacation before. Nice little coastal town. Um, used to be a military town. There used to be a military base down there, but it's in a whole other conversation. Um, Corpus Christi has got the eye of Hurricane Harvey bearing down on it, and they're getting hit hard. Um, Hurricane Harvey was a, a, a force or a category two hurricane. Um, the category system for hurricanes is complicated, but basically what it comes down to is a scale of, I think, one to four or one to five. I think there is technically such a thing as a category five hurricane. Um, but uh, I've never seen one in my lifetime. Uh, I've seen several Cat 4s, and I've seen some Cat 3s that were strong as Category 4s. Um, but it's category th it, it started off as a Category Tropical Storm that built up into a Category 2, or a Cat 2. And that basically, what category and that number means is how big it is, how much air, and it is moving. Um, it has to do with um, wind speed. It has to do with uh, barometric pressure and a lot of different things. It is a complicated thing, but it is, it is scientific and definable. It is like um, the Fujita scale for, uh, uh, I mean, for uh, tornadoes. Tornadoes have a uh, Fujita scale or a modified Fujita scale now, I think, that basically determines their tornado size, how big they are, what number rating they get based upon how much they eat, how much they are consuming, which is really weird. But with hurricanes, it is more about size, about movement speed, about twist about wind speed, how much water they're moving, stuff like this. Uh, right now, I think if we actually go look at the hard numbers, um, there is um, a pretty small eye radius on the hurricane itself, the eye of the hurricane in the middle. It is tightening up, and that eye radius tightening up is actually not a good thing because what that means is that it is constricting and reinforcing that wall, and it is gaining strength. It built up from a Category 2 to a Category 3 right before it hit the coast, so it is strengthening. And uh, I'm seeing, uh, I saw a uh, tidal surge numbers listed at 35 feet. That is a 35 foot hall, a tall wall of water on the tidal surge coming in towards coast, coastal cities. Um, there was 40 foot tidal surge on Hurricane Ike back in 2008. That hit, um, that hit uh, very, very hard because it was a category three, but it had the barometric pressure. It had the strength Technically speaking, it was hitting hard enough to be categorized as a Category 4, but it wasn't big enough in size, and it wasn't moving quick enough. So it was a Category 3, but it was like a 3+. Plus. And it hit this small town called Galveston like a truck and wiped big chunks of Galveston literally off the map. There are parts of that town that do not exist anymore. Whole peninsulas got wiped away. The geographic shape of the island got changed permanently by this hurricane. And that's, it's really bad for the coastal towns and especially the small towns down near the coast that have less drainage. They are closer to water level. This is going to be one of these problems that as climate change kicks in, we're going to start getting stranger weather. We're going to get more hurricanes. We're going to get more stuff like this. And it's going to get more dangerous all around the world to live near the coasts because of stuff like this. But as it stands right now, here's one thing I want you to take away from it. Down here in the South, especially down here in Texas on the Gulf Coast, hurricanes just another season. It's like summer, winter, fall, 
spring hurricane season. That's the fifth one. Hurricane season starts roughly, I think, about June and goes all the way in until the early weeks of November. I think halfway through November now is what it's uh, stated as being hurricane season. My whole life, we have known. My whole life, I'm used to my parents starting to collect and bottle up water and keep it in the garage or in a storage room here at the house when I was growing up. Um, you started about May bottling up some water and keeping it around the house so you could drink or if you had to bathe or flush toilets, you could use those big jugs of water to fill up the toilet and flush. That's the thing. Um, the, our house specifically has gas for the stove because um, of the, the way the town is built. A lot of the older houses, and this house is built in the late 60s, a lot of the older houses that were built down here were built specifically because hurricanes were a thing. And uh, we have gas stove, which means we can, we, I've cooked, we've been able to cook all the way through hurricanes my entire life that I've lived in this house. And um, uh, I went off and lived in apartments and whatnot. And the apartments have, of course, all electric. So if you lose power, you're screwed. But I moved back to the house um, several years back. And um, yeah, we have gas stove now here at this house. Um, so we'll be fine. I have never in the, I have to do math, 45 years that I have been alive and around this house, never seen the gas go out. The gas service has never been turned off. It has never been disabled. We'll be able to cook. We'll be able to sanitize. We'll be able to, you know, boil water as needed in case the actual uh, 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 city water gets contaminated. And that has happened before. Uh, we'll be fine. Uh, when I was growing up, hurricanes were a thing. It was, uh, such a thing as a hurricane party. A hurricane party is not just some weird, like, you know, let's go get drunk. No, hurricane parties were actually something where you and the neighbors right around your house or nearby relatives would bring the kids. They'd bring some food, bring some water. Everybody would bunker down at one nice big house. And you would do this not only to assuade the fears of the kids because you could set up some oil lanterns and candles if the power went out and you could actually play board games and sing songs and basically just play and entertain the kids. You could also do this to help calm the adults. It was a mutually beneficial thing. So I grew up with the concept of hurricane parties. I've had a big family when I was growing up. I have been in uh, this neighborhood when I was growing up where we knew all the neighbors, everybody kept in touch with each other. If somebody needs something, we walk it over to the house next door, whatever the case may be. Um, I'm not afraid of hurricanes. I'm afraid of the people in the hurricanes. You start going to grocery stores and people go into panic mode because they're not used to hurricanes. I was born and raised a Texan, born and raised a Houstonian. It's just rain. It's just wind will pass. Now, there are problems and there are complications, and this is going to affect my existence and my performance on this channel over the course of the next week. Right now, uh, we have Harvey slated to basically park on top of um, Corpus Christi and slowly lose speed and spin down. Right now, they're estimating, uh, I think it's 15 feet of water. 15 feet total of water to be rained down over the city over the course of the next week. Um, at present, uh, the only towns that have been told to evacuate were the ones that were right on top of the actual, uh, right on top of the actual where the hurricane was going to be hitting. Most of the towns around that have hurricane warnings or tropical storm warnings, not hurricane um, not hurricane watches or they have watches, not warnings. I'm sorry. The watch is basically the lower step right now. Houston's under a hurricane watch, tropical storm watch. That's it. Which basically means, uh, uh, we are on the East side of the hurricane. Now, for those of you who don't know, hurricanes are usually, uh, I'm actually going to double check this before I say this. Yeah. They spin counterclockwise. This one is at least, I actually, I've never paid attention to if they all spin counterclockwise. I don't know if it's a weather thing not going to go into it. I'm not scientific enough to say yay or nay, but right now it is spinning counterclockwise and we're on the east side of the eye. Now, what that means is there is the, basically the, um, the hazardous side and the dirty side is what it's called or the wet side and the windy side. We're on the wet side of the hurricane right now. Um, 
uh, a lot of people down here call it the dirty side of the hurricane. Basically, what that means is we're getting less wind, more water. We will get some wind that will blow stuff around and basically dirty the city up, but it's not going to be hurricane force winds that are going to be strong enough to knock things over. When we got hit with Hurricane Ike that barreled straight in towards Houston back in 2008, Hurricane Ike, we hit, hit us dead on, which means we had the eye and we had all of that wind hitting across Houston full force. We're not getting that right now. The hazard we have right now is water and high water. Basically, the town is going to be getting so much rain over the course of the next five days that there is a five to six days, there is a distinct hazard that it might cause problems, cause flooding, and cause issue of basically getting out and getting about. Now, I don't have a real day job. I'm a YouTuber. It's awesome. I don't have anywhere to go. I don't have to worry about getting fired. I don't have to worry about being late to work, losing my job, losing my income. You wonderful people support me. This channel is 100% fan funded, which means that I don't have to worry about losing my job, which is amazing. And I thank you for that. The wife works for herself and works together with my mother. They basically ferry old people back and forth between their doctor's appointments for uh, local home, local uh, um, retirement homes and stuff like this. That's self-managed, self-scheduled. Those old folks aren't going anywhere during a hurricane. That's not a job we have to worry about losing. We're good. Since we don't have to go anywhere, we don't have to worry about damage to the car. Our house is built on elevated ground. There is a slope down on my front yard. It's not a flat front yard. It actually goes like this, which means that I've only ever seen water get up to the house, like to the house. It gets up the yard, sure. But I've never seen it get to the front of the house, but once in my life. I've seen it get close, but never to the house. The backyard slopes out the other direction towards a ditch directly behind my neighborhood. Drainage ditch, big drainage ditch. Um, the streets have been overhauled in Houston so many times to improve drainage over the several course of the last several years. Um, there's a reason it's called Bayou City. Those bayous are there for drainage of water when it rains. Not just for good looks. They don't look good anyway. So Houston will survive. There, you're going to hear reports about from weather.com about, oh, this is the worst hurricane. We haven't had a hurricane hit the Gulf Coast since uh, 2004 was the number I heard this morning. That's actually not correct. Several hurricanes hit. Usually a hurricane hits somewhere on the Gulf Coast at least once a year. A lot of times, smaller tropical storms will hit several times across the, across the course of the Gulf Coast. We had hurricanes hit in 2008, 2009, 2010, 2011. Actually, I think 2010 was a clear year, but whatever. This is not as bad as it sounds. Yes, it is going to be bad for the people that get directly hit by it. But a large area, it is going to be rain, and it's going to be waiting it out in your house until everything goes away. The worst case scenario that we have right now where I live is the power gets knocked out. I'm an asthmatic. I'm not in the best shape, which means I need a lot of air conditioning. I only need a lot of flowing air. Um, if the power goes out, there might be a problem, but that's okay. I have friends up in Austin. We have plenty of food here. If I need to relocate somewhere, we can relocate to someplace that does have power within the city because the whole city is broken up into these little grids. Um, but I, I think we'll be fine. Now, if you are concerned about me, if you want to help in some way, uh, I'm not going to be shy in saying that um, tips through PayPal and stuff like that are helpful because we are buying a little bit more on the grocery budget than we normally would. Uh, we have to stock up on gas a little bit more than we normally would, not because we directly think we'll need it, but just in case we need it, so many other people in town are going crazy about this that those things are becoming a problem. Post-hurricane, once it's just parked and it's raining, there's a distinct possibility that power might go out in some parts of the town. If we need to buy something, we suddenly have to work with cash quite a bit. Um, so in general, if you want to help, if you want to support, you can go to patreon.com slash vagrum and you can support the channel that way long-term. If you want to support in the short term, um, you can actually head on over to my tips page that I use for live streams. Um, and uh, I will put links in the description below for that if you want to. Uh, but it's basically, I don't remember what it is. Yeah, it's vagram.streamjar.gg slash tip. If you go to mixer.com slash vagram, there's a tips link in the description for the channel down below the video. 
You can click on that and send tips in if you want to, if you want to help. Um, we are going to have situations where we're going to have to worry about making sure we have enough medication on hand for certain things, first aid supplies. And a lot of this we already have, but if something happens within my family, then suddenly money becomes an issue. Um, but for the most part, we're going to be okay. You're going to hear a lot of stories about rain, high water, things of this nature. And if anything does happen, I've got my trusty phone. I'll upload a vlog directly from it. If I can get internet, if I have internet, or if I can find it somewhere nearby, I will upload a video or I will step on to uh, discord long enough to let the folks that help run the league of ordinary gamers that uh, uh, what's going on with me. And I will be keeping them in the loop as well. So if you want to step on discord.vagrum.com, join the discord community, join the league of ordinary gamers and hang out with us there. And just generally, I'm going to be keeping all those folks in the loop. And we have other people that live in Texas. It's not just me. We have, uh, I know other YouTubers and content creators, live streamers that live in Houston. So we'll be fine. It's going to be okay. Don't panic. Just a hurricane. See you later.